What's going on YouTube? It's your buddy Will from the What's Up in the Sky 37 page or www.whatsupinthesky.com. I'm fresh off the Rock Nest videos and looking forward to getting a whole bunch of new videos out there. Moon, Mars. Um, I've put a lot into those videos. It took a lot, a lot of time to upload that last one. For some reason, it didn't want to export out of my software. I thought I was going to lose the whole video. Then I finally was able to get it out and upload it. It took about 10 hours to get it uploaded. But just released from uh, NASA, it was released yesterday, that the uh, there was a 27th Journal Science put out, on the 27th put out a couple articles about the water, and there's 2% water in the soil sample that uh, Curiosity took. And uh, NASA had put this press release out, um, here's a picture of the rover of course, that gives us these wonderful pictures, a lot of them which we look in our videos and we uh, look for anomalies. If you're new to my channel, if not, check it out hit the little button up there what's up in the sky 37 hit subscribe we got a whole bunch of good stuff and if you're interested in Mars this is you gotta look at some of this stuff so let's take a look at this here this is uh, out of uh, Pasadena California NASA's Curiosity, Ro <laughs> Curiosity rover is revealing a great deal about Mars from long ago processes in the interior to the current interaction between the Mars surface and atmosphere examination of loose rocks sand and dust has provided new understanding of the local and global processes on Mars analysis of observations and measurements by the rover's science instruments during the first four months after August 2012 landing are detailed in five reports in the September 27th edition of Journal Science. A key finding is that water molecules are bound to the fine-grained soil particles, accounting for about 2% of the particles weight at Gale Crater where Curiosity landed. This result has global implications because these materials are likely distributed around the red planet. So basically they're saying here is 2% of the soil sample taken was water. So, so that would equal about, for a square foot of material, that's about two pints of water. So you do the math. If we could extract that out of there, that right there is already a big key and it was going to be a big issue for us you know being able to to go there and function and sustain ourselves when we get there so that that's good to see two percent I think there's a lot more water on Mars and they're they're leading on to believe um, a hell of a lot more ice so let's keep going here a little bit and see what else we've got curiosity also has completed the first comprehensive mineralogical analysis on another planet using a standard laboratory method for identifying minerals on earth the findings about both crystalline and non-crystalline components in soil provide clues to the planet's volcanic history. Information about the evolution of the Martian crust and deeper regions within the planet comes from Curiosity's mineralogical analysis of the football-sized indigenous rock called Jake M. Um, ingenious rocks. I don't think I said that wrong. Ingenious rocks from the cooling molten material that, or that originated well beneath the crust. These chemical compositions of the rocks can be used to interfere Oh, hold on. Can be used to infer the thermal process and chemical conditions under which they are crystallized. All right, let me struggle through that there. Um, some of these rocks are pretty cool. So I know a lot of them came from volcanoes and stuff. Underwards, um, Curiosity examined this drift called Rock Nest with five instruments. Well, this is talking about. Uh, Okay, here we go. Another four reports include analysis of the composition of the formation process of the wind-blown drifts of sand and dust by David Blake of NASA's Ames Research Center at Moffett Field, California. Co-authors Curiosity examined this drift called Rock Nest with five instruments performing an onboard laboratory analysis of the samples scooped up from the Martian surface. The drift has a complex history and includes sand particles with local origins as well as finer particles with the sample wind-blown Martian dust distributed regionally or even globally. Um, so they're saying that the global dust does the dust does go globally. The fine grain component of the soil has a similar composition to the dust distributed all around Mars and now we know that there's hydration and composition than ever before. More about it. Said Pierre Messelin of the Institute of Rochereau and Astrophysique and Planet Tio. And uh, where's my buddy Terry to read that for me? All right. So basically, the big drift here is that. Um, We've got water. The expert now has not only find 10 distinct minerals, but also found an unexpected large portion of the rock nest composition and amorphous ingredients, rather than crystalline materials. Amorphous materials, similar to glassy substances, are components of some volcanic deposits on Earth. So that's why they're saying we get those things that look like uh, metal. They're supposedly volcanic deposits. I don't think so. Another laboratory instrument identified chemical and isotopes and gases released by heating the rock nest soil in a tiny oven. 
Isotopes are variants of the same element with the different atom atomic weights. These tests found water make up about 2% of the soil and water molecules are bound to the amorphous materials in the soil. The ratio of hydrogen isotopes in water released from baking samples of rock nut soil indicates the water molecules attached to the soil particles come from interaction with the modern atmosphere, says Lori Leshen of Polytech Institute of Troy, New York, lead author of the report of the analysis with the baking instrument. Baking and analyzing the rock nest sample also revealed the compound with chlorine and oxygen, likely chlorinate and percolate, um, which previously known to exist on Mars only at high altitude sites. That was found by some of our uh, satellites up there. Um, data obtained from Curiosity since the first four months of the rover's mission on Mars are still being analyzed. Okay, blah, 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 and so on and so forth. So, um,. I guess this is some part of the sample that was taken, the scoop marks at rock nests, and they just took some of the real fine sand there. So that's basically where it came from. And uh, that sand right there has got 2% water. So a square foot of it, bam, 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 would give us two pints of water. I do believe that's the right math on that. But anyway, guys, much love to you. I'll be hitting you back up uh, with more anomaly videos coming up. I thought this was interesting. I also like how they said since there's no life on there since the methane gas. Um, since they haven't found the methane gas. I love how we just make... Mars has to evolve like here on Earth. You know, God forbid it couldn't evolve any other way. <laughs> Much love, guys. Take it easy.